a newbie's guide to guilds. This should be good. Hello, Epic Seven heirs. Let's talk about one of the most important resources in Epic Seven, the guild. Guilds are an incredibly important part. Okay, hold on. This is this is really really quiet. They need to audio check this. They need to audio check this. Of the Epic Seven community and allows players to come together and benefit from some sweet rewards. Once your account reaches level 10, you'll be given access to the guild feature that can be found okay. through the lobby. Here, you'll be able to browse this is important. the of recruiting guilds. Once you apply and are accepted, congratulations! You're part Congrats, of the Congrats, that's it! You can access your guild channel through the chat button. You win. And many guilds create communities. Yo, did that guy, did the, wait, did that guy promote Charlotte? Yo, hold on, let's go back. It was this guy, did this guy promote Charlotte? You can access your guild channel. Yeah, right here. Yeah, dude. Look, summon Charlotte and then instantly promoted Charlotte to six stars. What an absolute Chad. Yeah, channel 20. Should have been in channel two. Yeah, should have been in channel two. Wait, hold on. Architects. Oh, this is Mashu's account. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is Mashu's account. He's in He's in Lights, Lights Guild. Channel to the chat button. We beat them. The Just throwing that out there. On online services such as Discord to communicate easier. So what's there to do now that you're a member of a guild? Every day, you're given a chance to contribute Hold as a reward. Hold on. Send screenshots of your navels to cat number 3219. I'd like to point out this. this is literally on the official the official epic seven channel uh where they didn't think to where they didn't think to cover up the send screenshots of your navel of your navels to light i and they didn't think that one through really yeah donations and aiding fellow guild members yeah that they they blurred out they blurred out the rest of the names yeah like they blurred out the rest of the names here uh, but uh, yeah, they didn't didn't bo didn't bother to bore that the one out. On the bottom right hand corner, and you'll be given a new currency called Brave Crests. See, even they don't have thirty people that log in and hit the button every day. The other main way to obtain Brave Crests are from donations and the aid section. Every day, you can donate gold and proof of courages you've earned from adventuring or completing bounties to obtain Brave Crests and Commander's armbands. You can only donate 50,000 gold and three proof of courage daily, so be sure to make the most of every day you log in. The next yep. main way to obtain yeah, Mosh has got a lot of gold. Other guild members. Every day, guild members can request their choice of runes, materials, or catalysts that other guild members can donate. For the most part, you'll notice that many guild members will put up easy to acquire materials such as lower tier runes or mana drake claws. This ensures that everyone can fulfill their daily donation limit easily. Yep. If you need catalysts and notice that your guild is using this aid strategy, be sure to check in with your guild and ask before doing so. The Catalyst, last way please. to obtain brave crests and other big rewards is through the world boss. The world boss allows you and your guild members to participate in a fight against a massive foe for an array of different rewards. There are always it provides you and your guild members a chance to hit the skip button. Against one twice per day use what units you have and gain assistance from your guild to deal as much damage as you can for the world boss your party size is massively increased into multiple teams of four units your scores will be calculated based on three bonus types all classes enhanced element and team mission bonus your score contributes to your grade good job guys differing chests that result in different rewards so be sure to participate in world bosses so now you know how to obtain Brave Crests, but what can you do with these currencies? That's where the member shop comes into play. That the is where the member... Dude, wait, hold on. Mashu hasn't even finished his Warhorn? Mashu, what are you doing? You have all of the armbands that you need to finish out Warhorn. You don't even have your other, your second proof of valor? SMH my head, dude. By far, the most popular of these items is the Molagora which is crucial for strengthening your unit's skills. The catalyst chests are also a great pick if you're looking to level up skills as well. No, no, don't cool. buy those if you don't have, no, don't buy those if you don't have Warhorn and your other proof of valor, Mashu, don't those do it. Are also a great yeah, don't pick buy if those. To level up skills as well. Guild crests are also used in unlocking Furious, 
a free obtainable four star unit that many consider a great choice in the wyvern hunt as a free come at me wyvern my body artifacts, is ready you can purchase an array of exclusive artifacts to equip your units with as for guild captains they can purchase exp gold and healing cost buffs that benefit the guild as a whole through the captain shop this requires purchasing with donated gold and proof of courage so be sure to keep donating to keep these buffs active for your whole guild. Finally, let's talk about the PvP aspect of being in a guild. guild All right, wars. the guild wars. Guild wars let your guild compete against another. Their literal stronghold if you're assigned to a is unequipped. War, you'll have to prepare by setting up two teams of three units. I would just like to point out that if Mashu Ravi has an imprint here, He's got these two units in the wrong spot. As you need to have them here for the HP bonus. Units each to act as your defense. Once the guild war begins, you'll be given three chances to fight against an enemy guild member. Here, things work a little differently than normal arena. Rather than one team of four, you'll set up two teams of three and fight in two separate battles. After fighting the first, it will proceed right to the next regardless of whether you win or lose. The challenger's punishment is also disabled and instead there is a turn limit of 99. After 99 turns, the battle ends in a draw. Once the two battles are completed, there is a chance of winning, losing, or drawing depending on the number of wins to losses you've had. I feel like these are pretty easy teams to beat. First team, you just hua the hua. Before their Hua can Hua your Hua. And then the second team, you just Violet, right? You just Violet Landy that team? During that fight, depending on your outcome, you'll increase the Havoc level for your team and will be awarded some Commander's Armbands. If a unit falls right. during battle, it will also be unusable for the rest of Sag. the that day. So be sure to replace them if that happens. After the Guild War ends, the amount of Havoc each team acquired and a winner is determined. Regardless of whether you win or lose, you'll be given some Mystic Medals, which can be used to summon some pretty powerful units. And with that, this concludes our small introduction to Guilds. Guilds are All an right. incredible part of Epic Seven's wide array of resources and are very important to take advantage of. There's no downside to being in one, so make sure to join a Guild as soon as you hit level 10 I mean, there's a downside if the guild if the guild leader just comes in your chat and calls you a sussy baka all the time. Uh, I think that's interesting that like they're they're putting out videos like that. I mean, I guess that's good.